This episode of The Casual is brought to you in part by Squarespace. For all your website needs, Squarespace delivers it in an all-around package to help you build a beautiful, integrated online presence. You know, weebs, Japanophiles, obsessed fans of Japanese culture, they get a bad rap. They really do. So many of them get that surface-level criticism slapped onto them, especially if they aren't Asian. As if you have to be Asian to appreciate Asian things. I appreciate Asian things. <laughs> Of course, you know, I, I live here. I dedicated my college studies to Asian stuff. So yeah, I'm all about Asians. <laughs> I'm also all about my peoples too. But I will say this, stop Asian hate. That, that is just ridiculous, all right? So I stand with you guys. I just thought that needed to be said. Anyway, I'm gonna give you a list, weebs. <laughs> 10 Japanese brands that you'll absolutely love, just for you. And they're not just for weaves, they're actually just for anybody who likes some some cool stuff. So I guess we just put the weave in there so people would click on the title. Sorry. I'm your boy Reggie Casual. These are some great labels for, for weaves. Let's get it. All right, so we're gonna start this off easy and get into some more difficult ones later. So the very first one that we got on this list is Legenda. Coming from the same fashion group as Vanquish and FR2, Legenda is like the new grunge Japanese silhouette fusion that dips into collabs with fame franchises from other properties that I'm sure you know about, but we'll get into that later. But beyond that, it's the perfect brand for those that wanna dip into like a Japanese youth style without breaking the bank. It is technically streetwear and it should be a familiar take for most of you. It does, however, suffer from the bad translation bug when it comes to prints that many Japanese brands fall into. But by now, that's like an inside joke. It's a corny one, but that happens. However, if you wanna partake in that style, it's pretty solid starting point. So breaking it down, if you're looking for a label for this era and a new grunge mix with a continued relationship with Evangelion, uh, Legenda is a go-to. You can find it at sino.jp, I believe they have international shipping. Don't quote me on that, but you probably check like Yahoo auctions if you wanna get stuff that's you know used. Second is Fundamental. Fundamental is a label that's been around for a minute and I happily recommend it. While it's not gonna give you the anime vibes, it certainly has the Made in Japan label that gives a more sophisticated take on the I'm in love with everything Japan shtick. You don't wanna be that person. Or maybe you are and you should just be better. Fundamental is a brand that uses a lot of denim, twill, patchwork, and indigo dyeing. So if you're into workwear at all, you possibly owe it to yourself to get at least one piece from Fundamental to add a little bit more flavor to the standard-ish everybody else is doing at the moment, like just wearing Carhartt all over the place. But you have been warned, once you go Fundamental with its great techniques and also classical Japanese-inspired pieces, you may say goodbye to the workwear of yesteryear and go down the rabbit hole of just Fundamental. It's that good and perfect for weebs and just regular-ass people. It, it's, it's all really a joke, really. We're rolling with it though. We're, we're, we're just gonna can keep, we're gonna keep it going. Continuing the workwear vibes and traditional Japanese techniques, Blue Blue Japan is a great, we've talked about this before. It's a great brand to show that you know way deeper than surface level of Japanese interests. Mainly because it's very hard to get outside of Japan, but if you you who auction that is, you, you may get lucky. Blue Blue, like Fundamental, works with the same materials and techniques. However, goes far deeper into aizome, which is the dyeing techniques that we're always talking about. And that happens with nearly every single piece, from kimono to nagahanten to haori to tees. Blue Blue is dripping, dripping in I guess blue. So you get a healthy serving of amazing pieces with ultra ancient secret Japanese techniques. They're not really secret. But the biggest issue that you might have is sizing it. As it is a Japanese brand, it does come quite small. So you probably it's best suited for people with smaller frames. But some of the pieces can enter the oversized range. So it's best to press your luck that way if you really wanna get involved. Now, if you're one of those, I love Japanese everything and Japanese designers are the best because they are Japanese people. First of all, pump the brakes. Second of all, we know you like Yoji and anime, so let your boy help you out a bit. You're gonna go ahead and hit up the shop, yojiyamamoto.com. Uh, I think that's .com or dot, I think it is .com, which is like the longest website name ever. And you're gonna check out Ground Y. 
Not only are you getting entry-level Yoji silhouettes at a cheaper price point than the mainline stuff, but you're getting a slew of collabs with everything from Ghost in a Shell to Marilyn Monroe. You heard that right, Marilyn Monroe. Those, that's, there's a collab with Ground Y. Ground Y is perfect for easing your way into Yoji silhouettes, especially if you're still wearing like graphic tees and the like, and want to mesh street with something a bit more elegant. Also, although it is cheaper, Ground Y doesn't lack for quality, so you're all good at that front. I will say Ground Y does encourage a level of commitment, so don't go all half on the label, or any Yoji for that matter. So if you plan on doing it, go all the way. All right, so to round out the first five, we got the label Facetasm. That's right, Facetasm, not Facetasm. That's just weird. Now you know. Anyway, started by that dude, Ochiya Horimichi. Uh, Facetasm is the answer to, is there a Japanese brand that screams Japanese design but ambiguous enough to be perceived as almost Western? I'm pretty sure nobody has asked that question, but it it is the answer to that question. Facetasm was started in 2007, but one look at it and you'll understand that it's always been ahead of its time. The whole oversized, multicolored, genderless, Gen Z style bravery was already explored by Facetasm way back when. Problem is, it's damn expensive and you just couldn't get it. But it also means used Facetasm is pretty much limitless. As for the weeb thing, well, imagine having prices that are similar to what's trending today. But when everybody asks, hey, what's the ID on that? You hit them with the, it's from Japan, which is like Weeb 101. You have to do that once. You don't even answer the question. You just bust out with that answer, just where it's from, which honestly is rude as hell. But a lot of Weebs are pretty damn vicious gatekeepers. So a brand that's in vogue in Japanese is like the ultimate flex for them. But also, Facetasm is just dope, right? Great styling, layering techniques, and use of color. So for anybody, it's still viable. Check Farfetch if you got deep pockets, or again, Yahoo Auctions, if you're feeling brave and you wanna dip your fingers into that water. It's a rabbit hole. It's a rabbit hole. All right, so we got five down and we got five to go, but before that, let's get into word from our sponsor, Squarespace. A big part of this fashion industry is presentation. That's why Squarespace offers up professional, clean, and easily customized website themes that will have you presentation ready from jump. So no matter if you're running an up and coming label or just wanna sell some novelty merchandise, Squarespace's e-commerce options, social media integrations, and robust analytics and data-driven backend make selling, promoting, and managing your website incredibly easy. All that, and you can save 10% when using our code squarespace.com slash the casual when you sign up. So why are you hesitating? Get started and make that website using Squarespace today. All right, so it gets a bit harder from here or at least requires a bit more dedication and or commitment. So let's go ahead and get it. While I wouldn't say Kazuki Kumagai or attachment is specifically for weebs, I will say that it's a great label to get into if you want to explore a level of sophistication with Japanese design without seeming like a total tool for everything Japanese. How do I explain this? Okay, so you won't see overt references to Japanese pop or classical culture, but rather tried and true design techniques that are heavily explored in the country. This results in a pretty amazing, yet casual, everyday label with enough Japanese cut references that you rarely see out west to have a distinct, noticeable look. However, it's familiar, and because of that, it's less aggressive, i.e. less try-hard. Because let's be real, the easiest way to get the weeb label slapped on you with clothing is trying desperately to wear Japanese stuff without any context or dedication or knowledge about it. Kazuyuki Kumagai eliminates that barrier by just dishing out amazing minimal thoughtful pieces with a Japanese technical flair that's less weeb and more cultured fashion enthusiasts. Maybe available at Yahoo Auctions again, but Fascinate.jp will probably ship it internationally. And it's one of my favorites, so you should definitely check it out. Trove, we already did a whole review on Trove, so you can go ahead and check that out. We won't go too far here, but succinctly, Trove takes traditional classic Japanese garb like kimono, nagahanten, haori, and such, and makes it palatable with modern looks. Don't ask me how they've achieved this at Trove, but they managed to make wearing a kimono less try hard and or cosplay and made it look pretty damn cool in the process. And this is exactly what the weeb needs, a reason to wear kimono without worrying about how to style it. It's true. 
The issue only being that it's pretty hard to get out west. However, on Trove's own site, they pick certain pieces from the current collection for international purchase, which is probably the best way to get it if you're interested. So check there. If you want something with a bit more design flair than Trove, you should definitely check out Ane. Started by former Yoji Yamamoto pattern maker, Hane Ishiyu, you probably know exactly where this label is headed just by that information alone. But rather than directly taking from Yoji's black laden affairs, Ane embellishes with color, lighter fabric choice, seamless prints, and just amazing layering. But again, be warned, it is a commitment necessary label. Many of the pieces just go well with each other and any deviation to try and mix it with another style may leave your wardrobe disoriented. However, there's enough populist references to attract those in the more casual department, i.e. there's a lot of casual pieces that aren't design heavy. Again, this is less weeby and more taste driven. It's the perfect label to show that it's more than just loving Japanese labels, it's about presenting an idea. And even though the Japanese references are reflected in the clothing, if you commit to it without announcing to the world that you are wearing a Japanese brand, uh, it's actually an amazing label to give people a different perspective on the culture of fashion. So that's really good. That's a good thing. But you can find the label Ane at United Arrows. Uh, they do have international shipping there, but it's pretty small offerings there. So unfortunately, unfortunately, but United Arrows definitely can pick it up. All right, so second to last, we have Nude Mariyama Masahiko. And yeah, this is the one that like you know about Yoji Yamamoto and you wanna prove that you know more than Yoji Yamamoto, which is again, like Weeb 101, proving you know more than the surface level. Anyway, you always wanna prove you know more than the surface level. Nude is like Yoji in the sense that the cuts are on the more voluminous side and it's incredibly nuanced. While Nude does get long and elegant, it's noticeably less wide and takes liberty with patterns a bit more than Yoji Yamamoto. In a sense, it's quite futuristic without looking all tech wearish. Also, the cool thing about it, it's, it's like Kazuyuki Kumagai in a sense. It's not bursting out of the seams with Japanese juice everywhere. So people probably won't even know it's Japanese unless you tell them and you shouldn't unless they ask, right? Because unlike Kumagai, it explores the more punk grunge elements within the fashion sphere without being loud about it, but distinct enough for somebody who's involved in that to notice. It's actually one of my favorite hidden labels in Japan as it also doesn't suffer from tryhardism, I made that up. And you can add it to existing styles in your wardrobe for a particular style, which I might add is great for most Westerners with multiple styles in their closet. It is expensive though, but it's worth it. And the quality is second to none. The best place to try and get it, fascinate.jp or Yahoo Auctions. Again, I will keep on saying that until I bore it into your skull. Yahoo Auctions, Japan, pretty good. And finally, we come to number one, Yulius. It's Yulius by that dude, Tatsuro Horikawa. That's been clamoring for me to talk about Yulius for a minute, and it's certainly about time, but Horikawa's Yulius is legendary. And not knowing about it, especially if you've been christened in the holy art of weebdom, is sacrilegious. You really should know about this label. Yulius is a label that dabbles in the avant-garde, so it's less Japanese distinct and more experimental which is great because it allows for more interpretation beyond the designer's ethnic and or nationality makeup. And that's also a good thing. It doesn't require as much commitment as some of the others on this list, but you would be missing out if you didn't at least get a full set of something you lose. It's pretty damn special and amazing and historically relevant, particularly on the materials end. It's just, out of control, it's amazing. At one point, Horikawa and Julius was mentioned in the same breath as Rick Owens, but due to Horikawa's other interests outside of fashion, he has since become more of a cult favorite, never really reaching the heights of superstardom like Rick. That doesn't mean Horikawa is washed, or Julius is for that matter. It just means that most collections are quite intimate and small and require a more earnest eye. Also, if you're looking for a military mix influence, Julius has that covered all the way. So if you like those looks, definitely check out Yulius, even for tech in, in a lot of aspects. And with that, we have them all. That's, I mean, not all, but that's our 10. But remember, 
The weeb label should always be a temporary thing. Life lessons here. Liking Japanese brands is not wrong, but if you haven't graduated from weeb to knowledgeable scholar or enthusiast that can be objective about Japanese anything, then you're doing it wrong. You wanna be objective about this stuff. You wanna, I just like Japanese because it's Japanese. That's a terrible reason to like anything. Now, sure, once you reach that knowledgeable state, people will still call you a weeb, so be prepared for that. It's a given. But at least you'll know that you know more than the basic surface level stuff. And really, that's all that matters. You really shouldn't worry about that noise from the other people. In any case, it's your turn. Let us know some other labels that should have made this list. Or if you're feeling creative, name some topics about Japan you think we should cover in another JP Fridays, even though I don't think this one dropped on Friday. It doesn't matter. Now, if you want extra content or you want to know how to build your own brand, or if you want to just kick it on our private Discord, support us on Patreon. Got a whole bunch of stuff going on there. But most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info on international street fashion culture and business from Tokyo. It's your boy and keep it casual. And I will see you guys in a minute.